Hello photo enthusiasts. This is a review of the Nocturnus 50mm from Maya Optic Görlitz. It uh, comes in this nice box. Um, this lens is looking pretty new but I have been using it for almost one year. And I will show you um, some of the results which I have gotten with this lens um, later in this video. I must say though that I'm neither a professional photographer nor am I very good as a photographer. I'm just an enthusiast in taking photos and I've got some experience with this lens. So as you can see the maximum aperture is 0.95 and uh, this makes it uh, one of the fastest lenses which you can actually buy. Uh, this model here is for Sony E-mount, but it's also available for Leica M and Fuji. It's rather big in size and it's um, heavy, I must say. Don't let it fall on your foot or you'll break a toe. It's really, it's built like a tank. It's all metal and glass and it feels very nice in, in the hand. Um, the aperture ring moves clicklessly and the focus ring is like moving with the right amount of resistance given the size and the weight of this lens. What I must say though is that the, the focus ring, I'm not sure if you can see it in this video, but it has a tiny little bit of play and I don't like it, like given the rather thin um, field of depth that you can produce with this lens, precise focusing is necessary and also I think for the amount of money I would like expect something else. Surprisingly, how, however, I do not realize this when, uh, when taking photos in the field. It just, you know, when you pay attention to it and you're testing to it, then you realize that there is some play, but in reality it, it makes no difference. Apart from that, this lens seems to be very well built. The optical system consists of 10 elements in seven groups. Thus it shares the same lens design with the much cheaper Mitocon. And what Steve Huff has shown in his comparison of these two lenses either willingly or unwillingly is, in my opinion, that they render photos in a rather similar fashion. He said that he could uh, see some differences in the way the photos were rendered, but if it is so, then uh, these differences were minor. Yet there are some other uh, more objective differences in these two lenses. The Mitocon, for example, has nine aperture blades, whereas the Nocturnus has got 15 aperture blades, which are coated. Uh, soon after my first video about the Nocturnus has been put online, in which I had claimed that the amount of aperture blades did not play any role, since um, this lens uh, would be shot wide open all the time anyway, Maya Optic has released a statement in the newsletter about how the amount of aperture blades impacts the character of an image. I will not go into the depth of lens design now. Of course, what they are saying is correct. The amount of, and the shape of aperture plates does affect the look of the image once you start to stop the lens down and certainly 15 aperture blades are better than 9 aperture blades in this regard. Yet I still think this lens is shot wide open most of the time. Okay, let's uh, take a look at some images. So the first thing we would do when getting a new lens is we find ourselves a beautiful and willing female model we put her in front of our camera and if it's a 0.95 lens we open the aperture all the way up all right we take a shot and that's the result that we are getting 
And it's looking ridiculous, right? Uh, with such a thin depth of field uh, when shot uh, too close. Um, I don't like this result at all. This one is much better stopped down just a little bit, turned the head. And um, there, I mean, when you look at it, you will see that the eyes are in focus and the, um, the hair is out of focus and the elbow. But um, since this is such a soft lens, you can get away with a much more drastic, with a much shallower depth of field than uh, you would if you were using a sharp lens, right? Because the transition is more harmonic because of the softness, right? Here you uh, see a typical result which you might want to achieve with this lens. I mean, look at the bokeh, the, the nice, uh, soft quality of it. It's so creamy and feminine. I mean, in general, it is, for me, a very feminine lens because of the soft bokeh and also um, because how it renders skin. Um, it's a little bit soft, but again, sharpness is not the holy grail of photography. And um, you will have to do less uh, post-production um, le uh, less frequency separation and uh, you don't have to remove so many blemishes because the lens uh, is doing a lot of this for you already. Um, in this shot I did uh, very little post-production. Um, the main thing was uh, getting rid of the highlights on the cardigan. Apart from this not much had been done. This photo definitely is not a portfolio shot. I'm not proud of it. Um, I'm just showing it to you um, so that you see that you can actually get a nice a pop effect with this lens. If you go just um, far away from your model enough and you close the aperture down a little bit, you will get a um, depth of field, which is um, okay to render like the whole uh, body in sharpness, in relative sharpness, I would say, and um, to, to get a really nice blur in the background, which uh, is giving the images such a nice pop. The manual focusing uh, combined with the razor thin um, depth of field makes it rather difficult uh, to, to nail the focus when the model is moving and in this case the model has been moving. Actually she was like doing her, how should I call it, dance routine around the chair and I was taking the photos and as you can see here it's a perfectly sharp knee and the face is uh, out of focus. These are those kinds of shots for which I love this lens. I love the soft feminine quality of it and um, I, like, I like this painterly characteristic which you can give to your images with this lens. And look at the setup, it's so simple. It has been shot at my living room on the sofa. The sofa was just away maybe two meters from the wall, that's all. And then just put some side light and the wonderful model Veronica Valentova. And uh, then, of course, I did some uh, post-processing, uh, mainly color correction to get like, I mean, it was a um, white wall, right? Uh, I had to get the, the, the color of the wall to blue. And, uh, but skin-wise, um, I haven't done anything on the skin. The, it's the lens that's giving this wonderful quality, right? And uh, some grain also had been added in post. Here um, you see just another photo from this uh, shot. The, the other one is um, working much better, but uh, just to give you some uh, variety. So, um, as you can see in this case, um, I did not uh, take it with a, a, a nocturnus to get a background blur because I was so far away from the model that it wouldn't make any sense, right? What I wanted to achieve is this soft, 
painterly look which I think in this photo is not working as well like in the one we had seen before um, but again for me it's it's okay it's um, I mean uh, for me it's a very nice photo but also because I have like um, uh, I had been there and it was very nice taking it um, if you can you can write down below if it's like a good photo or not but but I like it um, again the post processing with the colors and uh, all, of, all of that was um, applied but what I also wanted to show you here is like the um, chromatic aberration in the background and uh, let me tell you a story um, I had been shooting a, a wedding uh, with this lens and well believe it or not this lens is perfect for wedding shootings I mean when I was shooting the couple in the garden the, the result that there were such nice pictures coming out of this lens you know they were dreamy and romantic and soft and the, this lens really is perfect for wedding right if if you can I mean if you can nail the manual focus you have to be used to shooting in manual I think because on the wedding all has to be a little bit faster right and in some of these shots they were very nice but if the background was too contrasty then uh, I would get horrible chromatic aberrations in the background and to get rid of them in uh, post-processing it was such a pain in the ass it, it took me so long it, it was really horrible but there's one thing uh, you have to keep in mind of course this lens gives horrible chromatic aberrations but if I mean, t take a review about a sports car. If you were reviewing a sports car, it would not do the car just if you were like complaining that the car is not comfortable or that the the radio was was um, uh, was not good, right? I mean, if you if you bought a Porsche 911 Carrera and it came with a radio, you would get rid of the radio right you would throw it out because you want to save weight and you don't want to have like additional weight in this car like from a radio or something else right so um, this car it was built for speed and this lens has been built for speed too and like we would expect uh, some chromatic aberrations when dealing with a lens like this right Another typical uh, situation you might uh, want to get yourself into when having this lens are night shots because of the enormous capability to suck in light. And um, again, I think in, in this uh, in this photo, uh, it was working very well with uh, the, the nice background, the nice highlights. And I did um, do some orange and teal in post production and. I think the, the result was rather nice. Here, just uh, to give you some variety, another night shot, which I think um, is not so nice. Uh, this time black and white, and in general, I don't like uh, the black uh, and white coming out from this lens. I feel that it's lacking a little bit of richness in tonality. The colors, however, from this lens are very, um, very punchy, and most of the time I'm uh, actually reducing the saturation just uh, a little bit, right? But I mean, the strong colors, they for me they fit together with this, um, with this character in which the lens is, is rendering in, in general, and it actually adds to the, to this painterly look which I, which I like so much and which I try to achieve right often. This is uh, the photo which I like maybe most uh, and which I've gotten from this lens so far. You might be surprised to hear that I have shot it at noon uh, in broad daylight under a strong tropical sun and actually I had to put uh, the model directly into the sun in front of a shady background, right? This. There was this tree in, in the back and some water and uh, I have had her turn her face into the sun 
And then I simply uh, exposed for the skin, right? To get the right exposure. And um, to be able to do this, I could not shoot wide open, even with the um, Sony Alpha, uh, with a shutter speed of uh, eight uh, thousandths of a second. I, um, I had to step the lens uh, a little bit down. And then uh, what's happening, if, you, if you're stepping uh, it down, it will increase its sharpness a little bit. The, the photo will get sharper, but it still keeps its uh, soft character to some extent. And um, so, as I have said, this lens is rather soft and you can perceive it as a weakness, but you can also see it as a strength. It's like, it's a very feminine lens and the softness uh, makes the transition from in focus areas to out of focus areas more harmonic and it's it can produce this this look which I like so much and which I've mentioned this this painterly look and uh, it's flattering to the skin uh, you have to do very little post production uh, when the skin is concerned right so to sum it all up it's a lens with uh, some flaws and with uh, some negative attributes to it but it also has like one uh, very strong positive attribute and that is that it's a 0.95 lens and this fact is just awesome and amazing